It's an anxious day for owners Megan and Matt and their Yorkshire Terrier, Oliver. Hi, Megan. Hi, Matt. Hi, Hello, Oliver. How are you? The happiest Yorkshire Terrier that ever lived. Aren't you? Aren't you? He has no what? idea what today's going to bring. Yeah. So Neither it's crunch we. time today, hey? Yeah. A bit yeah. nervous, but... Yeah, understandably. I've been treating Oliver for quite a while and he has a condition known as medially dislocating patella, which is basically where the kneecap pops from the groove that it should be sitting in inwardly. Pop him on the ground and we'll just sort of see how yeah. he is walking at the moment. There's the hop. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, that's not even limping. He's just fully lifting his leg off the ground, isn't he? Yeah, and it's wow. definitely gotten worse, so. Yeah, that's not a dog that's a little bit uncomfortable. That's a dog that's quite significantly uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Watching Oliver walk, it's clear that the knee has deteriorated. He's barely putting his leg down. So we are going to have to bite the bullet and get this dog's knees sorted. And no matter how many licks, my friend, I don't think you're gonna get out of it with charm. Hey, come on guys, okay. let's go. Oliver is my little baby and I'm quite nervous for today. So if surgery is the option, I'm going to be a bit upset about it just because it's quite a lot and he is a small dog, but I just have to think of what um, is going to be best for him and getting him back to being healthy and happy and the dog that we love. All right, I'm just getting you just to hold him around the shoulders there. Okay. All right, so his left one is the one that's really causing him some mischief at the moment. Yeah. So what I can feel is that his kneecap is literally out of the socket and it's permanently out now, which is why this leg is becoming more and more dysfunctional. Yeah. Is it painful sitting outside of it? Well, I think a lot of the pain is already endured because it would have had to stretch significantly so that the ligaments allow it to pop out and stay out. But now it's staying out. He's just sort of trying to use what is a pretty dysfunctional leg. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is that his right knee really isn't that much better. If you put your finger, see between my thumb and my index finger, mm -hmm. and I can just show you how easily this knee so it goes. In. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that takes that can't be good. virtually nothing for oh, me dear. to do that. But it's the best of a bad situation. So, what he's doing is he's like, this one is horrific, this one is terrible, so I'll stand on the terrible one. Yeah. But he is masking what is significant and consistent pain. You That's know, true. Yeah. enough's enough, and we need to, you know, we need to do surgery. With Matt and Megan expecting their first child in just a few months, Scott thinks it's best to operate on both knees at once. So we have a couple of things to take into account and that's absolutely right and fair. Life yeah. is never simple. And because he is so small and so light mm -hmm. and he is so friendly and he's gonna be a great patient, I think it makes sense that rather than going through stage surgeries, what I think we should do is to fix your fur baby in one foul swoop get to the other side, and then we can enjoy next baby. Exactly. Well, no, it, it's obviously daunting to hear that, but uh, of course we want him to be back to his normal self and of course before the, the baby arrives. So if that's what needs to be done, then we'll just have to let him. Yeah. He's a tough soldier. Yeah, he's been a trooper, as you can as yeah. you can tell. So I know he can do it. It's just, um, he's just so little. <laughs> I'm really nervous, actually, about it. I mean, I know he's in great hands, but he's just so small and he's my little baby, so I'm just I'm just nervous for him. I know he can do it. He's been a trooper, but yeah, um, yeah it's just, it's a lot. We'll be sitting by the phone, waiting for, <laughs> for Scott to call, for sure. He's fine. See you later, babe. I'll look after your little man. Don't worry. Thank you, bye. All right, bye, guys. See ya. Okay, I'll sort you out, don't you worry. We have a puppy, good boy. Yeah. At an Isleworth Park, playtime is not as carefree as it once was for Labrador Jesse, his owner Angela, and her daughter Emma. Jesse's nine now, slowed down a lot, hasn't he? He's not quite as boisterous. Um, he's still, you know, quite jolly when we take him out. He still likes to run after his ball, but not quite so enthusiastically. Yeah, he's a good boy. Good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. 
In the last few years, the aging Labrador has started developing worrying lumps all over his body that are inhibiting his movement. Well, there's a few lumps he's got. There's one very big one here, one just here. But the one we're really worried about is right in his armpit, so you can't actually see it, but I can feel it. And it's really big, like the size of a tennis ball, and it's really hard. So that's the one we're hoping Scott can investigate and do something about. He's had three or four removed over the years, but this one, the biggest one, is the greatest concern now. I found the lump probably about six months ago. Gradually, it's got bigger, and it's um, quite hard as well, whereas the others that we've found in the past tend to be a bit more malleable. So this one is a little bit different, which would indicate something much more serious. Jessie, can you have your teeth? Jesse is absolutely everything to me. He really is. He's integral to the family. I don't know what we'd do without him, really. He is my baby. Tomorrow, Angela and Emma will be taking Jesse in to see Scott to determine what can be done about the lumps and whether they are dangerous. Jesse, you've got a very busy day tomorrow, haven't you? Right, little man. So to avoid you feeling intimidated, I've assembled my smallest <laughs> staff members. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time ever, you feel like a great Dane, don't you, against them? <laughs> yeah? Because I feel massive. <laughs> At the Richmond practice, eight-year-old Yorkshire Terrier Oliver is about to undergo major surgery on both of his knees. So let's pop him down. So he has very clear dislocating kneecaps, patellas on both sides. The yeah. left side, the one you're feeling now, you can mm. probably feel the knee is just living out of the joint. Yeah, it's, it's here out of that on the groove. side. And it's really difficult to even push it back in. Scott will be assisted by graduate vet Phoebe and nurses Sam and Jess. Hey, it's time for sleepy bye-byes now, mate. <laughs> Although Oliver is a very small patient, it's quite a large procedure that we're putting him through because we are actually going to be performing a knee operation on both of his legs. Now, normally, we probably wouldn't do that, but he's such a strong little dog and he's so very light that I feel that the best way to get through this is by doing them both at the same time, just one recovery period, and this boy should do well. Hello, mate. Hello, oh, buddy. Oh, hi. sweetie. <laughs> Here we go. Boy, been very brave. Some nice happy drugs on board. That's why he's taking his time. Yeah. He's going to feel so much better after this is done. Hey, this is day one of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just quite painful day one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Oliver's recovery, his rehab will be long and at points painful and uncomfortable. But I know that Megan and Matt are in it for the long term, incredibly dedicated owners, and they're going to will him to a full and complete recovery. Here we go. Oh, brave boy. Here you go. Hey. Heart of a lion, haven't you? Very brave. Mm -hmm. Next day, Angela and her daughter Emma are arriving at the Isleworth practice with their much-loved family dog, nine-year-old Jessie. Morning, ladies. Hello. Hello, Jessie. How are you, handsome boy? Are you okay? Well, he's still wagging his tail, and that's a standard with this boy, isn't it? Hello, mate. You all right? The mother and daughter are worried about a number of lumps growing on the old Labrador's body. Come on then, lad. In you come. Come on. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Jesse is his usual cheerful self, but he's obviously very suspicious about what's going on. And of course, we're here to reassure him at, you know, so he'll be okay, I'm sure. And he seems to really like Scott, which really helps. Yes, he's a lovely boy. All right. He's a lovely boy. He'd be the kind of dog I reckon that if he could sit on your lap, he would, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, he has tried. So the main issue, though, he's in for today is, of course, the lumps that he's been developing over the years. And there's this one big one, isn't there? Yeah, it does really feel like it's got maybe even a bit harder in the last couple mm. of weeks. Mm -hmm. The last time I felt it, it was yes, just a bit softer was. than that. Yes. 
very worrying, really. Yeah, and it's also it's it's in a really awkward yeah, place for him, awkward, yeah. and he's already an older boy. Yeah. We've already seen that he is suffering a little bit with arthritis. He's a yeah. bit lame from time to time, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. So we can't have that. So that's the main thrust of today is mm-hmm. to try and take that away and alleviate some of the discomfort that he's feeling. Mm-hmm. Good. But um, let me have a feel of some of the rest of them just to see because he's got a little one there, and then another little one here. One that I'm a little bit concerned about is actually this one here. Really? Mm. The reason that I'm concerned about it is it's in a position known as the popliteal lymph node, and it's just quite swollen, that one. Uh So unlike these ones, which seems to be just underneath the skin, Mm. this is actually attached. Right. Right, Examining Jesse, I'm quite concerned for a number of reasons. First of all, he's an old dog, and he does also have kidney disease. But beyond that, he's smothered in lumps. He's got soft lumps all over his body. And the ones that Angela and Emma are concerned about are the big ones near the front, but I'm actually concerned about the small little lump at the back. I feel like today, it's an opportunity for us to kind of improve his quality of life. But but to do that, we need to accept a few risks. And obviously he is an anaesthetic risk because he's an older boy, but he is tough and he's, he is a fighter and he's been through a lot already yes, and yet he, he comes has. through every time. Yeah. So all we can do is really hope that that's exactly what's going to happen today. Yes. Oh, you poor old thing, Jesse. I'm just worried now. This new lump has come as a surprise to us and is really of more concern because it could be a different type and obviously that raises other issues, it could be something more sinister. Nice and slowly, the boy. Having heard what Scott said, I'm looking forward to mm. finding out what yeah. it is. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Yeah, just be nice to know now and and get everything sorted out. Oh, Labrador. Oh, this is Jesse. I thought you'd quite like him, <laughs> Sam. I love a Labrador. Assisting Scott with the surgery are nurses Gina and Sam. <laughs> Today, we're just going to try and remove the lumps that are most concerning, understand a few of his problems, and get him back on track. Moments later... Come on. Scott is suddenly alarmed. When your patient fails to breathe or react in the normal way, nerves start to rise. Just going to flip him onto his other side. You're just trying to manage your own panic. Come on. We need to make smart decisions and we need to save our patients. Come on, mate. Yeah. It's just not breathing. In Isleworth, Scott is fighting to save elderly Labrador Jesse after he stopped breathing just moments after being anaesthetized. Just give him a breath of air. Come on. This is an old boy, and the longer this process goes on, the more concerned that he simply will not survive this anaesthetic. Come on. There we go, that was him. Okay, you took your time there, pal. That wasn't good. Thankfully, he starts to breathe. (laughs) Phew. (laughs) Now that Jesse is comfortably under anaesthetic and breathing well, I'm able to examine the masses a little better. And the one right under his armpit really is quite incredible. It's quite hard, it feels like about the size of a grapefruit, and it must be incredibly uncomfortable for this poor old boy. Oh, well done, Scott. Jeebus. So let's wake this boy up. But it would have been really difficult to work that out until you actually open up and take a look. You would have been sampling what you thought was fat, never getting the glandular tissue, questioning why these results were never giving you the answer you needed. What you needed to do is to go in and just remove a little bit of fat, and that's exactly what I've done. Jesse will sleep off the anaesthetic before going home tomorrow. Right, you have a snooze and I'll call mummy. Hello? 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 You all right? After an overnight stay at the Richmond practice, Scott's patient Oliver is ready to go home. Should we go and see mummy and daddy? Yes? Yes. Come on then. Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on. Show them how brave you've been. Good boy. 
That's it. Upstairs, his owners Matt and Megan can't wait to be reunited with their little man. It's been tough, but uh, both getting through it together. I know he's a warrior, so I'm excited to see him. Uh, I know it's been tough through this, and um, I think he'll be happy to see us, and vice versa. Ready? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Here's your little baby. soldier. Hey, Lou. Hi, Lou. <laughs> so he's been an incredibly brave boy, but obviously he's still a bit uncomfortable, aren't you, mate? So he's not at his scintillating best. <laughs> bit of a surprise on that left leg. He did pretty much completely tear his cruciate ligament, which is a big ligament in your knee. Yeah. So that was probably the reason why he was even more lame than he'd been in the past. Okay. Sure. So does it mean that I could fix that? alongside all the various other issues that were going on in that knee. And then the right leg, of course, has also been corrected. Amazing. But he's been such a trooper in that we put dressings on initially. He wasn't that comfortable because he's got two big, thick red legs. Yeah. <laughs> but once we took the right one off to see how it was looking, actually, he's now already standing on that leg, which is incredible, wow. really good. It's a long road to recovery. You know, he's been through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a good kind of maybe even 10 weeks before he's really going to be walking perfectly well. And during that time, lots of physiotherapy cool. and lots of TLC, which I can see he's going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Just happy to see him, but just can't believe how much pain he has been suffering in and yeah. knowing it's that. the haircut as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, apologies for that <laughs> in advance. I'm, I'm, I'm not a barber. Yeah. Um, I've done my best. It's so amazing to finally get to hold my little baby and see that he's okay, although obviously he's a bit distraught from yesterday, but we're so glad to have him back. You've got a bit of work ahead of you, haven't you, mates, eh? Hey? Yeah. So have you two. It's called a baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've got a lot on our plate at the moment. You we, do. He does as well, so yeah, we yeah. know he can do it. Yeah. So I'm hoping the 10 weeks will be in enough time for when the baby arrives. And of course, he can be back on his feet and able to help us out and support her. But overall, we're just ecstatic that he's in our arms now. Hills, thank you so much for looking after our little boy and taking such good care of him. Oh, you're very welcome. Good in the long run. That's it. In the short term, it's not much running, but in the long run, yeah. hopefully he will run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Next day at the Isleworth practice, Laura is bringing in three unusual patients to see Scott. Hi, Ben. Hiya, I'm here with my ferrets today for their vasectomy. Oh, they're so sweet. <laughs> oh, look at them. They are very cute. Scott should be around here soon, so feel free to take a seat. Thank you very much. No problem. I've got six ferrets. I've got three boys and three girls. Boy ferrets have to have a vasectomy, unfortunately, so that we don't end up with baby ferrets from our females at home. <laughs> How are you, Laura? I'm okay, thank nice you. To nice to meet you. Me. What are their names? Harry, Ron and Neville. Hello, boys. It's Ron, Neville and Harry. I pick up on a little bit of a Harry Potter vibe there. You're coming to get the unkindest <laughs> snip of all. Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> all right, then. Well, let's go into the concert room and have a chat about that. Hey, chaps? Hmm? Pink box. Unbelievable. Okay. Now, it sounds like a whole bunch of male ferrets have sat down together and made this fact up, but I promise it is fact that if female ferrets don't have sex, they can die. And the reason is, is that the female will continue to cycle until she's mated, producing a huge amount of estrogen. And that high level of that hormone can depress her bone marrow, lead to anemia, and eventually she can die. So who's this? This is Neville. Hello, Neville. How are you, you smelly creature? <laughs> so the plan today is to vasectomize the males and so they can continue to mate with the females. The females stop cycling and the males literally save the females' lives. <laughs> but the one thing also you need to remember is that uh, six weeks after we've mm -hmm. done the surgery is the first time they can really be properly introduced to the females because okay. there can still be a little bit of cheeky sperm lurking around, okay. <laughs> ready to, uh, yeah. yes, impregnate the young ladies. Yes. Hey, mate. Mm. All right, then. Let's have a proper look at you. Yeah, make sure that you're all A-OK. -okay. So, something that I'm always wary of with a ferret 
They're rather large teeth. They are rather yeah. large. <laughs> yeah, for a small animal, I mean, they are, that's gigantic. Yeah. And they're also quite strong-willed, so generally if they don't like what the vet's doing, they will... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me have a little listen and there we go, sweetheart. Very pretty, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. And then if I can just have a look at the, shall we call it, problem area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just see what we're dealing with here. So two testicles down here. And then his uh, little willy is just there. So we'll be doing incisions sort of here and here. Okay. All right, mate. All looking very good. Should we have a look at your brothers then? Yes. This is his brother. Hello. Hello, brother. What's his name? Ron. Hello, Ron. Hello, mate. <laughs> Hello. No biting. Hello, Ron. Hello, mate. Hello. I haven't done a vasectomy on a ferret before, so I'm quite looking forward to it, but they are really quite quirky little animals. Yes, they smell a bit. They're a bit pongy, but they're really cute once you get to know them. There we go. Small in size, but big in personality, this right. one. Right, okay. It's yeah. Harry. <laughs> Harry's a monkey. Very pretty, aren't you? Apparently very naughty. <laughs> yes. They're all very healthy ferrets. Large teeth, as you would expect, but everything else is in perfect working order. All right then, Laura, well, you can head off. Thank you very I'll much. I'll look after your boys. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you a little bit later. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Thank Don't you. worry, I've I'll got them. I'll try, Thank you. Bye. Bye. I feel a bit guilty about making them have the cruelest snip of all, but I know they'll be in safe hands with Scott. I just hope they don't take it out of me when I get them home. Hopefully they take it out of Scott today. Hello, you're going to be good. And if you've never worked with uh, ferrets before, Lily, big teeth. <laughs> so uh, be nice, hey. At his Isleworth clinic, Scott is about to perform vasectomies on three ferrets, yeah. assisted by Lily and Jess. Some Harry Potter inspired names here. We've got Harry, we've got Ron, and we've got Neville. No Dumbledore? No Dumbledore, no, unfortunately. No, or Snape. Huh? But... No. They're quite sweet. They are, aren't they? Hello. All right, so if you guys get ready to catch, yeah? Let's see, it looks like Neville's coming out first. Go on then. Good boy, well done, Lily. There we go. I think today what we'll be doing is gassing them down with a little bit of uh, inhalation anaesthetic, then we'll be acting like a little bit of a factory line. So Lily, I'll be getting you to do the anaesthetic and then doing the clipping, and then Jess and I will be in the surgery, and so we'll be performing the vasectomies. Once they're recovering, we'll swap and we'll just keep working through the brothers until they're done. That sounds like a plan. Yeah? He's like, that sounds horrible. That sounds <laughs> awful. Yeah? But hey, at least you still get to um, have some fun with the girls. <laughs> it's okay, so I'm lucky. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one, in. So the plan today is to vasectomize the males because then they can continue to mate with the females, but they won't have any babies. So that's number one down. Two more to go. It's not very often that you perform the same procedure on three animals back to back. And so we're able to perform almost a bit of a production line, really. All right, so if you girls want to swap ferrets, another things I've never said to you before. There we go. <laughs> Probably a little bit like building flat pack furniture. The first one makes you swear and curse and take ages. The second one runs much smoother. So here we have three vasectomized ferrets. Let's wake this boy up. My strike count on ferret vasectomies has gone from zero to three. So, yeah, it's good. Done well. How long do you think he's going to be now? Don't know. Not too long, I hope not. At the Isleworth Clinic, Angela and her daughter Emma have arrived to collect nine-year-old Jesse. I've just been really anxious to hear that he's OK and it's gone well. So hopefully Scott will tell us it has. Oh, man. Good boy. Oh, you're keen. Wait a minute. Yesterday, the ageing Labrador had surgery to remove some suspicious lumps. 
Oh, the waggy tail's back. That's waggy good. Waggy tail. Let's have a look at you. Oh, Come my here. goodness. A little bit of saggy skin where yeah, the yeah. massive lump came out. It yes. was like oh, about gosh. that yes. big. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Then removed the one further yeah. down, which was the sort of next yeah. biggest one. And then got to the one at the back, which I was concerned about. Yes. What was there was actually attached to the popliteal lymph node, but not actually part of it. Oh, okay. So we'll wait and see what the lab has to say about it. But so I'm feeling fairly confident about that one. Yeah, good. Aren't you a lucky boy, eh? You've been all sorted <laughs> out. Yes. I know that Jesse is very happy to go home with Angela and Emma, and he does have a bit of recuperating to do. He's an old dog and he's been through the works. But I really hope in a few days' time he's going to feel much more comfortable, all the wounds will start to heal, and this boy will be on the road to recovery. All right, will you get off and put your young man to bed? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Here we go. Bye, mate. That's a good one. Hey, Laura. Hiya. Your eyes? Yes, thank you. How and are your they? boys? Yeah, they did so well. They were very, very brave, and surgery went well. So good. I'm hopeful that you shouldn't hear the pitter-patter of tiny <laughs> ferret feet <laughs> anytime crossed. soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Laura has also returned to the Isleworth Clinic to collect her ferrets after their vasectomy surgery. Do you want to just have a quick look and have a look yeah. at the hand? He reckon wants to come out. Sure hello, you. Neville will be happy to come out. Come on. Hey. Oh, hello. Showing. It was very nerve-wracking. I did miss them. It was very quiet in the house today, but I was very glad to get the call to say they were all good and it was good to come and get them. So you can see the two little suture lines there, the mm -hmm. stitches are under the skin. So okay. it'll mean that they're away from prying little ferret teeth and uh, obviously a little bit of swelling, which is yeah. understandable. But given a few days, hopefully they'll be back to normal and then six weeks time, they'll be able to be introduced to their female friends. Okay. Yeah. Hey. So I must say I've um, fallen in love with them a little bit, oh, um, okay. with their personalities. Yeah. Um, their smell, not, <laughs> not so much. much. <laughs> I'm glad Neville's managed to win Scott over. Lots of people think of ferrets as quite snappy, not really very cuddly, but I'm glad that they've won him over and he's had a good experience with them. Hey, mister. What have they done to you? Good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you're a good boy. You. Yeah. Well. Let's put him back. Yeah, it's been an interesting day, vasectomizing <laughs> ferrets. It's not something you do every day. Yeah, not every day, yeah. Uh, no. Job. Okay. Bye, chaps. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> yeah. Especially now you know where I live. Yeah. <laughs> All right, take Thank care. You. Thank All you. All the best, much. Laura. Bye, bye. Bye, bye boys. <laughs> Three months later, Oliver, we're back. It's all about you today to see the doctors. Your turn. Matt, Megan and Oliver are back at the Richmond Clinic for a checkup. Yes, and we've got a new addition this time. You can show off your new little sister. Oliver had his surgery and then um, our daughter arrived probably eight weeks afterwards. So there was um, a short time period for him to recover, but he's been back to his normal self. And it was great when we first took him off the leash after the 10 week recovery to see how he was going to do. And he just took off running, ran up to everybody to say hello and look at my new knees. Hello guys, how Hi. are you? Good. Hi, really good to see you. Congratulations, I see. Oh, thank well you. Done. Thank well you. done. Well done. Mate, is this your little sister? Yeah. Oh. See, I'm a big brother now. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so how's it been going? Good, yeah, we've been really pleased with his recovery and seeing him run around and act back to normal has been fantastic. Oh, so. good. Well, he's certainly the friendly, happy <laughs> self that he's always been. Oh, Can yes. I have a little feel of your knees, my friend? Can I feel my handiwork? Yes. Can I? Sam, thank I? you. Let's have a little feel. So, the good news is, is the knees are finally sitting where they should. The patella, the kneecap is nicely central and not popping out anymore, so that's great. Oh, fantastic. Shall we? See my handiwork in action? Yes. Show All off right. your new knees. Go on then, do you want to pop them on the floor for me? Good boy. I'm very happy. Both the knees are sitting beautifully in the groove. The knees seem comfortable. Oliver seems happy. Hey, that's good, isn't it? What do you think? Yeah, nice equal weighting on each leg. He's shrugged off the lameness and now he's walking very well and he's back to his happy self. 
All right, well, I'm very happy with your little eggs, eh? Which is good, just so we can chase after his little sister. Thank you so much. Head off. There's your old baby. Aww, good luck you uh, with your new baby. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Appreciate no worries, it. Matt. Good to see you, Megan. Care. Take care. Bye, Bye guys. Ah, happy families. You can go off in a minute, run about. And after undergoing marathon surgery to remove several suspicious lumps, Jesse is back enjoying plays in the park with his delighted owners, Angela and Emma. Should we have a run about? Yeah, on a fetch? He's really keen to go on his walks again because he was a bit reluctant before, wasn't he? Yes. Certainly a few days after the operation, he had no interest in going out whatsoever. He just was lying on the sofa. So now he really looks forward to his walks. Mm. It's a good, good boy. Today, Scott is checking up on the nine-year-old Labrador and delivering the all-important test results. Hello, ladies. How are Hello, you? Hello, Scott. How are you? Good. Hello, buddy. Here's our boy. Jesse, going to come see me? Hello, boy. <laughs> How are you? Who's that? Hello, mate. <laughs> How are you? Ah, oh, it's so good to see you. Wow, he is a happy lad, hey? He is. Much happier. Yeah. He's completely yeah. transformed. Yeah. He's having so, a nice time. Oh, good, good. Well, I mean, obviously, it was a, a big surgery yes. that he went through. How's he been afterwards? Much better. Really, yeah. really good, yeah. He can walk much better. He's happier. Yeah, he's much more enthusiastic to go out. Great. Great relief. Well, let's have a little feel Good of that uh, surgical site. And wow, I mean, the difference is incredible. I mean, he actually has a perfectly formed armpit there now. You can yeah. really feel that. And as a result, really without that see there. The difference. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tremendous. Yeah, well, let me have a little feel of the, uh, yeah. the little area at the back there. Because that was where we had the real concern regarding his future. And mm. good news is that it's come back as just a fatty growth, completely oh, benign. Thank goodness for that. that yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's really good. We were so worried about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. It's such a big relief because we were worried about a couple of them. Scott was as well, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's really good news. Still wagging his tail, aren't you, mate? Hey? Well, I want to see you running around like a puppy again, hey? Can we see you? Chase that ball again, can we? <laughs> Look at him go. I know, really fast now. It's really fast, Jim. Yeah. Oh, bless yeah, you. Know, he hasn't run around like that, you know, for yeah. a couple of months. Good lads. Come on. Not, not Without the ball. Not, not no. <laughs> I can fix some things, but not everything. <laughs> Jesse. Seeing Jesse running around the park, he just seems so much more comfortable after the surgery. Now I've been able to remove that, well, it was like a grapefruit sized lump from underneath his armpit. He's been able to place his legs in a forward direction before he was throwing them around, making him quite uncomfortable, leading to more pain associated with old joints. But now Ready? he's running around like a puppy again. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, it's so wonderful. Look at that. He's like a really spring bird. lamb, he is, isn't he? Isn't he? Hey? <laughs> hey? Good boy. It's marvellous to see him, you know, back to normal. Good boy. You've got yourself a job for the whole day, mate. Well done. <laughs> Good boy, he's a good boy, yay, good boy. A few more years in the old boy yet. Jesse, come, come on. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.